And then I tell you, I never forget it, Lane. Them, I was over there one day, right by the two lane court. Man, I used to. Man, when I tell you, I used to ball out in two lane court. I'm talking about ball, ball, ball. One day I was going around there to St. Margaret's and stuff. Lady said, "Come around here and cut it for me, because they can't make it over there where you at." And she said, "I give you a whole lot of money if you come over here and cut it." So I went around there and cut it. Took me a while, you know that. And she said, "You're not gonna believe this." I remember you. She said, you was big back then, but you was younger. And she said, you real big. Now, come on up. They're like, she said, you ain't gonna believe this, but you know that guy, Tim? She said, he's a cookie. I'm like, what? She said, hell yeah. That man with all that fussing and cussing and gangster stuff, she said, he ain't nothing but a cookie. Like, I said, you don't mean it. Trying to tell you, like, she said, he don't do nothing but get on the computer and steal folks stuff now, like. He get on there, he think everybody, oh, think everybody's an apple. Say the nigga made a song talking about on the inside, everybody's an apple. I'm like, nigga, you, it is something wrong with you then. You is a cookie. You know I mean? Ain't no, everybody ain't no goddamn apple now. Shit. Everybody ain't no apple. You know what I'm mean? saying? You know, you know, a lot of people with that, uh, with that gigolo and that pimpism, see, they think they can pimp everybody. You know what I'm mean? saying? Just because you're a Mac, you know what I'm mean? saying? That don't mean you can mack everybody, you know what I'm mean? saying? There is limits to it, you know what I'm mean? saying? You ain't finna punk everybody, you know what I'm mean? saying? Somebody gonna be punking you, you know what I'm mean? saying? And I know you don't wanna share that with us, how many people have punked you through the, through the years. And I'm pretty sure it's quite a few of them, you know what I'm mean? saying? But you know, but everybody have their weakness. What is it about you? Do you fear dark skinny guys, you know what I'm saying? Man, if that nigga had a gold and one of them power walls in the mouth, I'd be scared of hell of him. I mean, do you just tell me? You need a haircut. I don't want you to have no cornrows. You don't look nice with cornrows. Is it because they look like I'm bigger? Because I have big cornrows? Oh, yeah. So these are the things you have to ask gigolos. Why are you fussing and, and mad at that dude all the time? Oh, yeah. Because you feel like some women that you supposed to be controlling, you won't have no control of? But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, back to the story of that, you know, when Tim was, you know, he's always been kind of small, but when he was real small, and we was we was over there at White Frost Drive, and I ain't gonna lie, it was a whole lot of white people out there, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't get time, I didn't have time to play with none of them, because it was some girls that stayed in this apartment, and their mama, ladies and gentlemen. When I tell you every day that we live out there, Lay down. They used to come and pull on my ruler and pull on it and snatch it until they snatched me out of the house every day until I was at their house eating. Every day, like, thank you. I'm not telling you no lie. They used to pull on my ruler every day. Dang, stop! And I'd be like, leave me alone. Then it'll be a yardstick. And then next thing you know, they'd pull me all the way to their house and I'd be over there eating and eating like nobody's business. And you know that lady just say, Coronado, I'm just mesmerized how you be tearing that dessert up and stuff. And you still can eat all the other stuff. She said, she said, they, these foods be throwing it away. They don't want it. I'm like, no. And they be like, man, you he can shit. They just say that I can have all of it. Like, thank you. You know, she always say, so you didn't want to, you didn't want to come at first. You didn't want to come, I had to pull on it. And, I, and that every day, cause that really I had, I had fun doing what I was doing at home. You know, I had a nice setup right at the house, a real nice setup. I'm gonna tell you, cause see, the lady that the ladies that stayed right next door to us, ooh, baby, man, they had a lingerie thing going, oh, baby, and they used to always tell me to come in there and tell, tell us how, how is it, does it look good? Hell yeah, it look good, you know what I'm saying? I used to be riding there with them in lingerie parties and stuff like that. Every night a lingerie party. So like the neighbors, the ones I tell you is coming, grab me by my ruling till it was a yard so they can pull me out of the I think they used to do that because they was, you know, they wanted some, they wanted some help around their house too. But nevertheless, you know, I don't know if the dude was adopted or he was a bodyguard. But he was always mad. Uh, and you know, and, and 
And one of my role models told me, Nardo, he's a demon. That's what he said. He's a demon. And they went over there to uh, Great, to, to what they call that thing? They went over there to Britain and they said, this is what this guy is for real. And he was a beast. He was a beast, you know. You know, his, his color, the color on his coat was like a, like a dingy ass charcoal coat. He said, nah, this nigga ain't nothing but a low down beast. That's what he is. This is how you're supposed to treat him. And they used to holler at him. And they used to holler at him all day, hit him upside the head and stuff. They say, he bad, Nardo. You must, his mama and them, they having problems out there. He real bad. You know what I'm saying? They say, you got to put a chain around a nigga neck like that and keep his ass tied up on the tree all the time. And that's how they show him. Say, he real bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, you know what his mama said? He don't want it. He don't want it, shit. He got all them women around there and he don't even want none. Leonardo ain't doing nothing but indulging in. I'm talking about every day he's in there indulging, eating all of his dessert. Oh, I'm talking about, man. When I tell you that things, oh, baby, that, that cake they used to have, oh, baby, that stuff. She's like, slow down, don't eat it all yet. Like, uh, -uh I'm eating dessert first. And then they used to throw me there too. The rest of the daughters are like, throw me there too. Like, go eat this too, then, while you're eating it. And then I tell <laughs> Then I should throw that fork in that thing. <laughs> throw that fork in there, turn on that generator. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to play a thing. Now, I know y'all seen, uh, you know, when they be uh, pulling that concrete up and stuff like that. Or that jackhammer and stuff like that. Well, that's how it is. But nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, back to Reginald Denny. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to tell you one thing about Reginald Denny. Reggie Denny. Reginald Denny was a real brave man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Reginald Denny, you don't, you're not aware of what's going on around you, are you? He had no idea. Because I'm going to tell you, it was a whole lot of Latinos and Koreans walking around. You know, some of them had on Confederate flag shirts and shit, road tied and stuff. Just because you see somebody fair skinned that have on the Auburn shirt, it don't mean they white. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm man. But when he got out of that rig, baby, and flexed his muscles, oh, baby. Man, he thought he was in Sunnyside, California, but Man, them folks beat the shit out of Reginald Denny. I don't, I don't think he ever recovered from it. Huh? They said Reginald Denny. When they were so mad at what they did to me when I went to Bama, they said for what they did to me that first time, they said they put about 300 some stitches on his ass. You know what I'm saying? 300 or something. That's on just one, one opening. That ain't the rest of the opening now. That was just one of them gashes up there on that head. Man, you know how them folks always have a brick on the side of the road? This is for Nardo. We don't like him. You ought to see the one they put on Reginald Denny ass. Well, you would wish it was a brick, baby. Um, they put a cylinder block. <laughs> they put a gray cylinder block on his ass, baby. That thing that hold your trailer up, you know what I'm saying? They say, if they give you any more problem, Nardo, you call us down here in L.A., man. Damn. They keep on tripping and stuff. We have another surprise for they ass. Not that. Not that, man. I'm just saying, I don't... You know, I know how the Koreans, I know that they going through it. You know? I know the Koreans want to be rednecks and slave drivers, but I've already given Kim the A-OK -okay to go ahead and start shooting missiles at South Korea. I already told them to go ahead and do it. No, that, no, that's what I tell them. And that, and that way you guys will have your own muscle relaxing. Because you know? white people and Chinese people and Koreans, they need muscle stimulators and relaxers too. I don't, I don't want you to think that you bad <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's bad enough just for Negroes. I want you to realize you got troubles got down right down the road, too. you only one bad move from an attack, you know what I'm saying? You know, that's just how it go, you know what I'm saying? Because I listened to the lady and stuff, and, and they was on the TV and the radio, and she says that they approve of Jack stealing the money out of the bank. Well, you can't stop Jack from getting killed, though, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to tell these girls. You up here sleeping with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and you telling Jack it's all right to steal money with the extra space storage. You can't stop Jack from getting killed, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
when somebody strike him and kill him, are you gonna be there saying you sorry? <laughs> no, she's not. No, no. She gonna find another athlete or another banker, and she gonna cheer him on. You know what I'm saying? But when he dies, she ain't gonna be. She gonna say she ain't have nothing to do with it. Huh? You know what I'm saying? When Jack get killed, she ain't gonna be nowhere to be found. But right now, she at the radio. Let's go extra space storage. Let's go reach his bank. Let's keep stealing from this nigga. You know what I'm saying? But when Jack get knocked off, you'll never hear from that white girl again. You understand what I'm saying? So please, please don't be misled. Like, you know what I mean? Don't be misled. You know, I would, I would like you to be my friend and stuff like that. I hate to talk like that, but you know, I've seen these things before. You're probably like, why is he talking like that? It's because of the signs. Like, you know? Just like you fly kites, other people fly kites too. You know? I'm tired of this nigger. I mean, you can say that, I mean. You can say that and you can do that, you know what I'm saying? But the consequences behind it, you know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't like it used to be. You know? The tables can turn at any second, you know what I'm saying? You're like, one time Nardo was saying that David Woods was going to win. Now he's saying that Elton Dean's winning, you know what I'm saying? Just like that. One time, i never forget it, we thought that David was going to win. Now he's saying that Steve is winning, you know what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? By a landslide. And it don't look like there's going to be another white leader ever again. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's why you got to be careful. You, know what I'm saying? you have to be careful. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, man, I'll never forget when Nardo was rooting for the University of Alabama. Now he's a diehard Clemson fan. You know what I'm saying? We've been trying to get him to come up here and talk to us. He said he don't even want to meet up with us no more. You see what I'm saying? But you had your chance, though. You know what I'm saying? You let 20-some years of invitation slide by. And you know you know what the girl was telling me? The only reason they're telling you to come around now is because they know you like Clemson. You know now they're telling you, hey, we've been thinking about you. How are you? You know what I'm saying? Well, see, it's 20-some years later. You know what I'm saying? No. Those are things you ask somebody every Thanksgiving and next Christmas. You, know? you ask them every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, every spring game. You don't ask them 20 some years later when they found a team that calls them all the time. Uh, yeah. You see what I'm saying, Lena? Don't that make sense? A narrow left lane, you know. So, you know, you had Chad and the white man walking across the lawn and stuff like that. Man, if I could tell you how many white folks that got beheaded because of that, Lena. A couple of Negroes too, like you know they got shit like Hezbollah and stuff like that, Al Qaeda, Taliban. Man, they be killing niggas left and right because of stuff like that, like you know. You got the white man walking across McGee Road and stuff like that. Man, do you know how many white folks and got beheaded because of that, like you know? I don't know. That's why I say what I said, like, you know. I ain't just saying it in vain or nothing like that. I ain't saying that. I'm not saying that stuff for nothing to tell you. I ain't saying that stuff for nothing, man. You got to pay attention. You want me to start naming the folks that ain't got killed? Come on now. You smarter than that, man. And just think about, just think about this, ladies and gentlemen. Since that incident, you know, after that incident, after that incident, you know who won the presidency? Donald Trump. You ever notice that? You know what I mean? Them same, them same Negroes that came in there and did that with them white folks to back them. You know what they said? They said they hate Donald Trump. That's what they told me. We hate Donald Trump. We want you to quit drawing these pictures of him. He's not going to win. He's a loser and a racist. Next thing you know, when they pull that shit, guess what? Donald Trump won later. Like, you know? So they show enough mad now. You know what I mean? They mad as hell. Uh, uh. They said I was the only Negro that they known that was campaigning for them. Got down the radio station, called me and said, come down here today. You're going to be our star guest. Good morning, Coronado. Thanks for coming down to 1440. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. How about yourself? Like, what how you feel about the Donald Trump election? I like, I'm his number one fan. Uh, thank you. Oh! The phone started ringing off the hood. You see what I'm saying? Because those Negroes and those white folks, they hated Donald Trump. Huh? 